Hey, hi there, Sagittarius. Welcome to my channel. My name is Linda, and I'm thanking you for tuning in to those energies and influences that are coming through for your weekly reading, July 14th to the 20th of 2019. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Ascendance. This is a predictive, condensed, general reading. Please only take those portions that resonate with you. And remember to check out that description box below. There is a free birth chart calculator at the bottom and some timeless readings. Thanks, you guys. After the reading is a take-note moment. Okay, Sagittarius. Off-camera, I've done a protective blessing. I've shuffled and meditated over these cards. Just for you. Your first card, it's the general atmosphere. This is the background and the basis of the matter. The Five of Cups, Sagittarius. You're brooding. This is water energy. This is a disappointment, something that you expected joy to happen from. But you're not looking at the two cups that really matter. This is dwelling on a painful past. It's those two cups that represent what is really important. This is a card of choice. You can continue to brood over what went wrong, or you can think about how it can be better in the future. This is sadness and mourning and suffering. It's an emotional adjustment. This is a feeling of loss and sadness. It could be the loss of a cherished dream or a love possession. But with this loss comes a change and an opportunity. So do not run away from your feelings. You've been waiting for a new beginning for a long time. This is a period of transformation, the start of a new phase in life. So use courage and determination to find your way out. Something has passed. It has flowed on, but something new is waiting for you. So turn around and address new spiritual possibilities and truths and have faith in the future. Turn to the new. Your second card. It's the energy that's crossing over your path. The Knight of Wands, Sagittarius. This can be you or this can be a message. It can also be the coming or going of a matter or travel, moving. This can be a Sagittarius, or an Aries, or a Leo. This can even indicate a change of residence, or a journey, some kind of adventure. It fills you with vigor and passion. This can be a young person, young man. They can be a generous friend or a lover, but they can also be very hasty and impatient. It could also mean a change of residence, an emigration, Quick departure. Knights are younger in spirit, if not age, than the king or queens, and less established in life. They're full of eagerness and self-confidence, and they do not always know where they're going. And without concrete plans, they can burn out before they achieve their goals. They may riot, be riding towards an encounter. Knights are messengers and travelers. As you can see by the speed of his horse, this is a faster energy. This is someone that could be bringing you good news concerning work or social activities. These glad tidings can relate to almost any anticipated happy event, the journey or a vacation, that change of residence or a job, could be an engagement or a marriage. But the person bearing the message can be trusted and they're faithful. Knights are driven by passion for a cause, and passion is the cause for this Knight of Wands. If it hastens the pulse or spikes the adrenaline or raises the stakes, this knight charges after it. Your third card, and this is how it affects you. It's your attitude. The Queen of Pentacles, Sagittarius. Earth energy. This can be a person. Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Sun, Moon, or Ascendance. This is someone that's domestic. They're generous and benevolent and regal. They may be privileged, and they respect money as a tool, but they do not worship it. They want tangible results from the money that they distribute. This can indicate security. This can be a mother. This is harvest after much labor and prudent uses of resources. This is someone that's protective and nurturing and resourceful. They're bountiful and they're down to earth. They're fertile and healthy, and they're a homemaker. They love being a homemaker. They love their gardens and growing things. They love nature. They're affectionate and caring, and they know how to manage money. Sometimes dependency upon routine can make her fearful of change. 
This is being warm and peaceful and hospitable, earthy, nurturing, sensual, faithful, security-minded, and efficient. Here's your fourth card. It's the position of the future. It's the outcome, the results, and the advice. The Five of Pentacles, Sagittarius. This is Earth energy. You might be feeling a sense of lack. You could be struggling with another person. It uh, could be unemployment or financial loss or having doubts. could be an illness. This is your second five in the reading, which represents vigils. You're watching out for something. Also, this is uh, two fives equal a ten, which is a completion. The new will be coming. You might need to ask for some help, because assistance and support is available for you. And these hardships are going to pass away. These circumstances that you're crippled by are just temporary. Could be ill health. Could be complaining. This is a need to rebuild your self-worth. Could be feeling unstable or having some scarcity thinking. There's alienation. Friends are supportive. You might be anxious about being able to support yourself and others and feeling ashamed about it. Fearful of asking or having to rely on the support of others. Or ill health may prevent you from bringing in the money you need. But you're not alone. In times of need, the lesson is you need to reach out to others. These connections are what makes our life special and allows us to persevere through the hard times and be grateful for those who have our back and reach out to others. This could be strain or anxiety over money. It could be temporary hard times ahead. So pay attention to detail. Sometimes this could just be a loss of confidence in your ability. These are sharing needs and abilities that relieves hardships, helping others and as a complementary pair. As you can see, the Two of Cups is the underlying matter. This is a pair, a couple here, and they love each other. Your fifth card, it's the bottom of the deck card. The underlying issue, this is what's unseen. The Two of Cups, Sagittarius. Here's that partnership. You guys have the same thing in their cups for each other. Love and respect. Commitment. This is, could be a marriage. It's a strong union, a strong relationship. Sometimes, especially the beginning of one. Could be a love match, a partnership. There's attraction here. This is making plans with a kindred soul. There's respect and sharing and harmony and balance. Emotional support and understanding. This is dealing successfully with strong emotions, their basic energies, important feelings, at times can be in conflict with each other or complementary. So take note of your feelings and needs to make a decision, and feel the joy in your soul when you're doing something for yourself or others. This is talking things over, it could be letting go, this can be a reconciliation. And to remember, shared joy is twice as sweet, and shared sorrow is only half as bad. This is a shared bond with wishes and your fears are intertwined. And now your advice from the animal messages. Seek inspiration from your animal guides by Susie Green. Sagittarius, you've got octopus. Octopus, travel across the earth and over the sea to securely embrace your dream. Octopus does not wait for fate to deliver her dinner of crab. Employing whatever strategy is necessary for his capture, even abandoning water for earth's air, she counsels that you too follow your dream. If your partner has left for a faraway land, join them. If a new exciting possibility calls from distant climes, embrace it as firmly as octopus does crab. If others obstruct you, like octopus, eclipse your actions in an inky cloak until your dream is securely within your grasp. Here's your take note moment, Sagittarius. We all have two functions of our mind, and the functions are unalike. They have separate attributes and powers. We have an objective and a subjective mind, the conscious and the subconscious mind, the waking and sleeping mind the surface self and the deep self. 
the voluntary mind and the involuntary mind. We use most commonly the conscious and the subconscious mind. Try looking upon your own mind as a garden. We plant seeds, thoughts, into our subconscious all day long based on our habitual thinking. So as we sow in our subconscious mind, so shall we reap in our body and environment. Sagittarius, more next time, so I hope you stay tuned in and leave me a comment or a thumbs up, and please subscribe. Now remember, what goes around comes around, so I'm sending you out love and light and blessings. Thanks for watching.